How's everybody? Welcome to part two of our series, uh, Everything You Need to Know About Fishing with Drones, Drones and Kites, um, Ultra Heavy Tackle Fishing, call it what you will. Um, in this part we're going to deal with uh, the reels, the braids, the lines, how we put it all together and why each part is chosen specifically. Um, I think we need to go back to where shark fishing was a few years ago and uh, talk about um, the reels we were using then for standard fishing and still are used today for sliding. The, um, for the reels like 2050s etc etc. Um, you know, we always had in South Africa there was a school of thought that line capacity was uh, the be all and the end all when the trinnies first came out, especially 2050s. And um, you know, we thought that if you put a thousand one hundred meters of fifty pound braid on that and um, fill the rest up, whatever you got, three hundred or two fifty for between five five and six oh, whatever you're using at the time, um, you felt like you were pretty bulletproof. And I suppose for the most part you were. Um, but you know, those fish came along that just had no respect for for the drag that those reels can uh, put out. And um, myself and many other people were um, given proper hidings on that sort of tackle. And uh, what you find when you're in a situation like that is you, line capacity really doesn't mean a lot if you can't put the drag on that is needed to stop a fish like that. And um, with those sort of thinner lines what happens is that fish eventually gets 1.4, well say 1.3 k's out and um, starts cutting left or cutting right and just the drag of the line in the water alone pops something, something always goes. And um, so I think South Africa was probably a little bit behind um, the rest of the world in the line capacity versus drag um, game. Um, if you'd ask me now if I would take line capacity or drag, drag wins every single time. Drag is what destroys big fish, um, not line capacity. Um, drag is everything when it comes to really, really, really big fish. Um, so I think as a starting point for me, um, for the, the drone and the car story, is a minimum of a real, like a 50 wide, two speed preferably. Um, so this is a Shimano TLD 50A two speed. I've been using these reels for over five years now and they are incredibly, incredibly good value for money. Um, there are many other reels um, higher up the spectrum which are fantastic but if you're looking for a good value for money reel you go a long way to beat these things. Um, they've never let me down. Um, just make sure it's the 50A not the 50 LRS long range special. Um, if anyone wants to know why the LRS is a bad idea in these uh, just do some research on the net. Um, anyway so a 50 wide 2 speed to me is where you've got that's your starting point as a reel uh, for this game Be because they provide you with massive amounts of drag um, and the specs vary um, between reels and manufacturers um, this one um, approximately at strike I've set with the reel full at around 12 kilos um, or so, maybe a little bit more, um, which means that when you've dropped that bait at 300 meters and you're leaving it at strike, um, your drag is significantly more than that. And at full, it's significantly more again. And as the reel empties, the drag gets frightening. Um, with this reel, with this is the, the reel with no mono on it, um, on full and if I try to pull this line off here, I'm going to cut myself. Um, it is frightening the amount of pressure that you can put on a fish with, with these reels. Um, or 50 wides in general, not the specific reel. Um, so once I had the reel, it was a case of, well, what's the starting point for braid? And I think, really, what's the point of massive drag unless you've got um, the braid and the mono to back it up? So. For me, it's 100 pound braid. That's where it is. 1,000 meters of 100 pound braid. If you own a 50 wide reel, that's got to be your starting point. 
thousand meters of hundred pound braid. Um, some guys go, oh, well, we want to use eighty pound braid because we put them on. Again, you're still falling into the trap of line capacity. Line capacity is useless without drag. Um, hundred pound braid can take so much more punishment than eighty pound braid, and it can provide so much more drag in the water over eighty pound. And Again, don't look for the thinnest braid. You're not trying to find the thinnest braid. You're trying to find a, th a thousand meters of hundred pound braid that'll fit on your reel and still allow you to put some mono on the top. The amount of the mono on the top is really not that critical. The way I set mine up, thousand meters hundred pound braid. Then for mono, I use eight five. Um, I have used eight o. I have used nine o. But 8.5 is the perfect um, compromise, in my opinion, for my fishing. Um, when it comes to mono and leaders, I only use T-line. That's all I use, locally manufactured. It is absolutely bulletproof. This stuff, you cannot beat it. Um, it has never let me down. The, when you start talking about the 2.5 stuff, um, the 2.5 stuff that I make the leaders out of. Um, I've, you've gone, I've made the leaders out of the thinner stuff too over the years. I've used actually nothing else for any leaders from 1.2 to 2.5 mil. As so far back as I can remember. Um, this stuff is ugh, it's as close to being indestructible as you could want monofilament to be. So I use T-Line 8.5. Um, I started off back in the day when I first started this game with about 120 meters of 8.5 or 8.0 back then probably and, um, and then my leader and what I've started doing is as my leaders have become longer and longer I've started reducing the amount of mono purely from a practical point of view because I want to be able to get my leaders mostly on my reel at the end of my day's fishing. So I think at the moment I'm at to about 80 meters of 0.85. Um, let's just talk about putting mono in the front quickly. Um, there's lots, a school of thought out there, you guys. Well, why don't you just fill your reel with 100 pound um, braid and then just attach it straight to straight to your leader? Um, I would say that in this whole setup, the most critical piece, if you want to talk about and one element of this thing. Um, over and above the drag of the reel that just destroys a big fish in a fight. To me, there's nothing more important than that 8.5 or that piece of mono. Um, whether it's 50 meters or 80 meters or 100 meters um, is really neither here nor there, but it has to be there. Um, as This last season that was brought home to me like probably more than ever before. Um, well, I got a, a really solid Zambi at a very difficult place in the trans, in, in, on the wild coast. And um, that fish took, in, in crazy current, that fish took no more than 70 meters of line on a full drag. And once the drag had killed that fish, or had broken its spirit, let's say, um, for the rest of that fight, that fish could not pull any more line off this reel. Um, you could feel it with the 8.5, you could feel it wanting to go and it would it would go and you could feel the stretch getting pulled out of the 8.5 and then you would just feel the stretch turning its head. That fish just could not get momentum to take any more line. Um, and that has happened time and time and time and time and time again. That the, one cannot, uh, you literally cannot overemphasize how brutal the stretch is um, in 80 or 100 meters of 8.5 um, against a fish when it's trying to take line. It is, it's unbelievable. So that to me, it is absolutely critical. I wouldn't even consider um, going braid straight to a leader. Um, never mind the fact that Fish go over reefs, fish go over sandbanks, other fish swim into your line, dolphins swim into your line, birds fly into your line. Um, I am so much more confident with that 80 meters of 
insurance um, between my braid and, and that fish. Um, so then from that 8.5 I go to um, a 2.5 milliliter. They average around 15 meters or so. Um, and the 2.5 more liter, um, these things are incredible. Basically, um, when you're fighting a fish, uh, a blackfin can roll and jump, it can do what it likes, it can go through reef, it can do what it likes. This stuff doesn't break. It does not break, or well, I've yet to have it break. Um, and once you get that fish close, um, it's like having a 15 meter gaff already in position for your mate to go down and just grab that leader and once he grabs this leader it's game over um, and when, once again while we talk about the drag story um, if you've got a fish 150 meters out and it starts cutting water like fast something like a blackfin or a grey you can feel this stuff vibrating in the water. You can literally feel it vibrating through the water um, as that fish cuts left or cuts right. Um, can you imagine what that drag is doing to that fish? How it's sapping energy. So, um, yeah, very important. I have gone down as far as 2.2 mil, I think, or 2 mil. Um, that's fine, but I, I'm hard pressed to go away from 2.5. Um, so yeah, that's the story, um, how we put it all together. I'm just gonna talk you through the knots I use and then I'll actually show you how I put it all together on my own, one person. Um, I also, like I said to you before, th fishing must be simple. Um, if you've gotta have people coming over to help you tie knots or you need tools or, uh, I just think it's it's not gonna, it doesn't work for me anyway. Um, so I, there's, there's a couple of things I need to be able to do. I need to be able to um, use simple knots which are never going to let you down over remember this, I'd rather you have a well tied simple knot than a poorly tied fancy knot firstly and second of all I want to be able to do it all myself um, without the use of other people and tools etc etc so to me the simplest way that I set this thing up is from my braid I tie a bimini, um, probably like a 30 turn bimini in the braid. Uh, from my 8.5 I'll tie a bimini, uh, 8.5 I'll probably do like a 15 turn maybe something like that, um, turn bimini and then they just get cat cord together. Um, And then a bimini on the other end of this, and that gets cat's poured to my leader. It is as simple as that. So it's just biminis, you need to learn a tie bimini. I have gone through the stitching loops into the braid and all the rest of it, and at the end of the day, um, it's not necessary. If you can learn to tie a decent bimini, it's it's the only knot you need to learn in order to put this whole system together. Um, just quickly going back talking about the line. Um, so I have big bulk spools. You'll see it just now when I do the demo and how I do the cat spools. Um, the bulk spools are awesome for filling reels at home and whatnot. But what is really cool is if you've set your reel up right, you can go and buy um, these little 100 meter, this is T-Line Classic, but it makes no difference, Classic Titanium really at the end of the day. This stuff is so bulletproof. So you can go buy yourself two or three of these little 8.0s or 8.5s or whatever you decide to use. And you chuck these in your bag. And um, if you do happen to get cut off or whatever, there you go. So easy. Open it up. Bimini. Cat's paw on. New line on. And you're ready to go straight away. You don't have to carry around big spools of bulky line. So that's quite a handy tip of um, to keep spare line with you if you so need it. I've actually, <laughs> I've never needed to do it, but that's what I would do if I was in that situation. So cool, 
what we're going to do from here is I'm going to show you how to cat spore the braid from your reel to your main line and then from there I'll show you how to make up a wine or leader. Cool, let's get to it. Okay, so next we're going to cat spore the braid from our reel to our main line. Um, I've already tied a uh, bimini in my braid and I've tied a bimini in my main line. Um, look, if you've got someone at home to help you with this, great. I, I like to know how to do things myself, but that could also be because it, I was single for way too long in my life. Um, so yeah, this is how I cat spore on my own. Basically what you need to do is take your take your braid, put it around your feet. Um, this works from with spools like that. It works with spools like this on your own. It works with spools like this. And I've done it with spools like that. So really there's no excuse not to be able to do this stuff on your own. So braid around your feet and you can do this any way around you can do it with the braid this way around from you we can do it this way for this demonstration maybe so the braid that way around reel away from you take your spool of line take your other loop that loop goes over your feet and then you literally just through both loops, one, two, three, four, five. Here's another school of thought. You can go as many or as few times as you like. I like to go seven, six, seven times. Right. Now the only trick is you've got to just put your hand inside here and just pull everything apart, just keeping your fingers inside there. Pulling it nice and tight, pulling it nice and tight, and once you get it really nice and tight, to that sort of stage, just lubricate it, take the braid, and under pressure just slide that knot down until you get a perfectly tight cat spore in seconds on your own and that's how easy that is to tie on your own um, I'm going to quickly wind this line onto the reel and then we'll go through the leaders Okay, right, so now we're going to talk about how to make your wind-on leader. Um, this to me is probably one of the most important connections in this whole setup. Um, if you make them properly, they will never fail you. Um, some guy, or there have been demos done and articles written on ways to do this. I think a lot of it's very complicated. And possibly some of the complication is necessary um, in the light to tackle side of things. But um, with the super heavy stuff, um, uh, I think you can get away by making a very simple wind on leader. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, firstly, I just want to say there are many different types of Dacrons and colors and stuff. And there's all sorts of suggestions out there. For your own peace of mind, if you can do it, buy your 2.5 ml leader, take a piece, go to the tackle shop, ask, him what, ask them what they've got, and 
try it for yourself. Make sure it goes inside properly. Um, the guys in the tackle shops don't always know, um, and it's happened to me where I've bought Dacron and got home and it just hasn't been right. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm liking this black, I think it's 200 pound or 250, I can't remember, but it's a lot. Um, so that's what I'll show you in this demonstration. The only tool you need, um, there's, there's two tools, but really the, the, most, the one to make the actual one on is so simple. Um, the only tool you have to have um, essentially is a piece of single strand wire. Doesn't really matter how thick it is as long as it's you're able to work with it. Make it 30, 40 centimeters long once it's bent. Um, just sort of halve it and squash it with a pair of pliers so it's sort of fairly pointy. And then um, you basically need some Dacron. I like to just take a meter, so I, or just close to a meter, so I grab it on the end, take it somewhere over here. It's good enough. Cut it off. So now you've got your Dacron that you, you need to make this wand on leader with. And I'll take like probably just less than a third. I like to make my loops. Let's just talk about this quickly. I'll make the loops on my wind on leaders very small, which is slightly impractical for when you're putting it on. Um, because if you make a nice big loop, you can loop the whole loop of the leader through. Um, but I like to have small loops. I don't like to have these big loops. If this thing has, happens to go over a reef somewhere, I don't want there to be some big loop that can catch on something. Uh, I know splitting hairs and it's really, you know, taken to, the, to another degree, but I like to have a small loop on my wine on leader. Um, it's just how it is. You can make yours big, make it easier. I make my loops small. Um, right, so, depending on how big you want to make your loop, I suppose, uh, just find a spot like two thirds down or whatever it may be, or one third down, let's say, and stick your needle right through the middle. Take the end, just bomb it in there, pull it through. So now you've got a loop. And the last thing is now, now you can decide exactly how big you want the loop of your wind on leader to be. So let's say I'm going to leave mine somewhere like that. Okay. So now you go through the piece you've just pulled through, go through the middle of that one. Take the other end, wedge it in. pull it through and just lock that up. So now you've got the start of what is called a Tanaka's loop or a Tanaka's splice I suppose it's called. This in and out sort of braid or splice locks this thing that it's immovable. And then basically just do that another two or three times. Let's just go through here. through, tag end in, pull through. With this very thick Dacron, do you just try to make sure that when you pull it up, it's pulling up flat on itself, it's not twisted? Because it is so thick, it just lies better if it's flat, if that makes sense. Um, go through the other side again.
and even that would probably be enough. Let's just check here. Um, I'm going to go through one more time here. and flat okay so at this point your splice is essentially done now this is where other guys get all technical with double splices and this one slides I'll show you that the way I do it on this heavy stuff and it does it does not let you down um, One thing I do like, or I don't like, is it when my line goes inside and then I've got a thin piece before all this rigidity starts here and you've got this like hinge. I, I, I don't try to get away from that. So what I like to do now is this end tag, we're going to pull this inside and then we're going to put our line up till it basically butts up against it. And this doesn't have to be crazy long um, inside. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to even trim this down slightly. Um, to be fairly short. Somewhere around there. This is locked. This splice locks us off. So you don't need, there's no other fancy knots to stop this loop from coming undone. That loop's not going anywhere. So now what you do is you take your piece of wire just a bit longer than that tag end is and you push it into the Dacron and you run it up inside the Dacron inside the middle of the Dacron until you reach the base of where that is and then you just pop out like that tuck that splice or tuck that tag end in and just work it until that piece goes inside bring it right through the bottom pull that out and now you've got that now you can take all of this pull it down the tag ends up inside, so you've got your loop, your tanaka splice, your little tag end is inside there and now you've got a hollow piece of Dacron the whole rest of the way. Okay. You need to take your piece of 2.5, piece of sandpaper, doesn't matter what, and just round over the end. This just makes it so much easier to push in. Okay, so there you go. Nice rounded off end there. Then I just take my sandpaper and say the last 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, I just go, just run it through say twice. That is just to give this, if you see it roughens it up a little bit, just gives it a bit more grip on that Dacron. Um, Then you literally just take your Dacron, take your end of your line inside that Dacron and just feed it up. Just keep sort of bunching it up, pulling it down Bunching it up, pulling it down. Now 
Okay, we're starting to get close. You can see that little sort of thin part there. You see the hinge I'm talking about. So this is where, where your tag end inside ends, and that's your line. So what I like to do is go up and almost try and get this to go inside that tag. It's almost impossible to get it to do it, but you can see now that there's almost like a little bulb there. I'd rather have that than have a hinge. That makes sense. So now you've got essentially your loop, your splice, your tag end, and then your leader inside. You see how it doesn't, it's not hinging obviously there. That's when you know, so your, your leader inside here is right up, maybe even inside that tag end. And then all that's left to do is just finish off the end here. And um, that's how easy it is to make a bulletproof 2.5mm wind on leader. And I'm going to just quickly grab a little tool here and I'm going to show you how I finish these things off. Simple as that. Okay, so right, we've got our um, leader inside our Dacron. To finish this off, you just need to find a place to put this loop. I just use whatever door handle or side of my H-frame. And just keep working this down with your hand a few times till you know that they all the stretch, if you can call it that, of the braid is out. Okay. Then the only other tool I use, I've got a fly tying bobbin. You get all sorts of fancy tools. This couldn't be more simple than a the cheapest fly tying bobbin you can find. Um, and I've got dental floss on here at the moment, <clears throat> but I've used braid. <clears throat> it really doesn't make too much of a difference to me. I'm not trying to win a fancy competition here. I just want it to work. Um, pretty things are nice, but they're not essential. So there you go. Um, just to the end of your Dacron, take it over, wrap it over a few times, and just start working that down. Just trying to bind that end. This is not adding strength necessarily to your leader it's just um, finishing it off essentially you get there you see the fibers coming through just go back up over them again come back down again Okay, see I've got a few more left there, it's not the end of the world. So, then just go, <coughs> we can trim that off I suppose. Then just work your way down, a couple centimeters down the nylon. Dental floss is nice, it does sort of tend to pull really nice and flat. The, the main purpose of doing this thing, you see how it starts making a nice transition there? So this had to go <clears throat> between the rocks or something. It's not going to catch here and then, that is the only weakness of a wind on either. If something catches this end and puts like a Chinese finger trap and it starts loosening it here, it's going to come off. So um, yeah, that's the basically the only purpose for it. Come back up again a couple times. You can do this nicely with dental floss at all, just blends in. Back down again. And then essentially, you want to take a little loop of your dental floss, put it in. Wind over that another 10 times or whatever you want. Something like that. Take that off. Trim that. Put that tag through the loop. Grab your end pieces just 
pull it all through. You just need to trim that little piece off. And for the most part, with the dental floss, especially this wax stuff, you just run your hand over it a few times, it kind of like melts all that wax sort of, and that becomes done. You can, if you want, go and put a drop of super glue on it. Some guys do that, I do it from time to time. But for in all intents and purposes, that is it done. 2.5 mil wind on leader. Job done. Bulletproof. Really isn't really isn't overly complicated. Um, no reason why you can't do that yourself. And what we'll do now is um, put this onto the reel. Okay, so I've just tied a bimini in my 8.5 mainline. My wind on's done. Now I'm going to show you how to put these two together. As I say, you can make this loop bigger, put the whole loop of your wind on through. This is the way I do it. Um, not to say this is the only way, it's the way I like to do it. So just take your bimini loop and your wind on loop and I'll just put them like that. Take that, chuck it through. And then it's just a case of putting your leader That's the first loop. Then just take it, take this little hard piece, through it through again. Pull the leader through again. Final time. With this thick stuff, I go three times. So, that's where we're sitting now. Then it's just a case of pulling that up. A little bit of lubrication maybe and just under pressure snugging that up and there you go. Cat's paw to your 0.85 mono and that's that. Um, really there's nothing overly complicated with this whole system. Um, everything is designed to be as bulletproof as possible um, and really at the end of the day fishing like this and being able to stop these really big fish um, quickly and efficiently um, is good for the fish and good for the sport and good for all of us at the end of the day um, so that is my real line leader braid setup entirely. When we come back with part three of this whole story, we'll talk about um, hooks, swivels, steel, um, traces with sinkers, attachments, and how to put that whole story together. And uh, we'll take it from there. Check you guys on the other side. <laughs>